All right, so in the last video, we made the um, this repeatable object that uh, you could plug in any number of repeating items, uh, like the wall, and then be able to repeat that any number of copies that you want, right? Okay, so. And I mentioned in this video, uh, the last video, that uh, that if you wanted it to turn or bend, um, that you could use a spline for that. And so what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to take this idea one step further and, and allow the, um, the spline to control the length of the copies instead of the um, instead of this number. And that's going to be like the precursor to the spline idea that turns around corners and gives you uh, corners that you can uh, bend in any direction. Um, okay, because the, the idea with the spline um, corners is, is a lot more complicated. And so what I wanted to do is kind of baby the idea in with just the spline going in a straight line. So it won't be a lot different than what you see here. You're still gonna have a bunch of things in a straight line, um, but you'll be able to use the spline instead of this, this number, okay? All right, so let's get rid of this. Now for this, we, we still need most of the functionality that we built in this blueprint. And if you wanna see how I, I put this together, uh, watch my last video or watch the video called uh, procedural procedural static mesh generation um, But this is what I worked out last time basically it's super simple um, And you can watch that video to see how this is uh, put together, but we still need we need like all of this pretty much all of like, We need almost everything here. We're just calculating this differently than than this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a copy of this and we can call this BP spline repeatable. Okay, we're going to drive into this. We can get rid of these. All right. And so we're not going to need copies anymore because that's going to be calculated now. Okay, but we still need the repeat with because that's how we're going to calculate how many we need. All right, so we do need a spline component, so we're going to add a spline here. Okay, you can call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But then we're going to drag it out. All right, so now what we have to do is, the spline is only going to be uh, from start to finish, okay? And so, but as a precursor to um, the next video, I'm going to go ahead and calculate it just from the first spline point to the next spline point, if that makes sense. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the number of points. Okay, because again, this is going to be like a pre kind of a precursor. Um, we're going to drive this loop here. Uh, no, actually, this loop is later. Okay. So we're going to go for loop. I'm going to go ahead and... Now, with splines, you don't want to put anything on the last spline, I don't think. And so we're going to minus one this. Because things get weird if you don't... Uh, if you try to put things on the, the, the last point, it actually doesn't exist. Um, all right, so we're going to actually drive this down here. All right, so now we're looping through the number of spline points. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the spline. We're going to get, get the location at spline point. Okay. And we're going to use this index as our point. And now what we need is, we need the direction, actually, you know, we need distance. 
So we need to get a location at spline point. So we don't need that. Spline goes this spline. Okay. But we, we don't need it from that same index. We need to add one. We need to get the next spline point. Okay. So now this gets the location of the, of the first spline point. This one gets the next one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the distance. And you plug both of those in. That will give a distance. It's a float. Now, rather than do a bunch of crazy math and figure out this minus that, divide that, um, they actually give you a... Uh, a uh, division and remainder. So division whole and remainder. And so what that'll do is that'll say, hey, um, I need to to divide and how many is in that and then what's the remainder. So it's kind of like the uh, division and modulo at the same time. Now we're not using the remainder yet, um, but we're going to need that later. So we're going to take this repeat with, plug that into the divisor, divisor, uh, okay, and that is going to drive how many copies we loop. So we've got this loop to that loop. We're still repeating the instance uh, based on this repeat width, um, and that'll, that'll work for now, but what happens is when we turn the corner, um, Again, that's going to be the next video, but I'm just kind of setting you up for it. When we turn the corner, we now would now have to calculate the Y location based on whether we've turned or not, um, and then add the repeat width to Y instead because we'll be going down another axis. And so things get a lot more complicated when, when we turn a corner. And so that's why I wanted to start simple and just do this one instead. All right, so let's compile this, save it. We'll jump over here. We're gonna add one to our world. Okay, now you can see the little spline there. Okay, there's my little spline. And now I don't actually have any repeating items yet, so let's add our wall. The door, okay, so it automatically adds the one. Um, but you'll see now when I drag Grab the spline first. When I drag the spline out, as soon as I pass the wall, it'll add another. No, it didn't add another. Oh, I didn't put my repeat with. <clears throat> so you can see as soon as I get past the point where two would fit, okay, now you can change this functionality a little bit. You can say, you know what, I, I don't want it to, it has to fit inside, which would be okay. Okay. So then to do that, we're just going to change this one here to minus one and drive it off of that. That way it won't add the extra piece until it can fit inside. Okay. And that may be that may make more sense because once we turn the corner and move this thing this way, we'll want this one here. We won't want one here, right? So as I drag this out, it'll add any number of copies. All right. Now you still can't. Here's the one of the caveats too: is even if I move this, it doesn't matter. It's not following the orientation of the spline yet. Okay. But if I move this to the point where another one could fit, look at what happens. So it's still just calculating the length. Okay, so this has some flaws in it. But if you keep things in a straight line, you should be good. Okay, now you could add, say, three there. Now if I, if I want to rotate this, I want to rotate the, the root object here. Okay. I can move this around as a base. I can rotate this any direction that I want. So I can have this in any direction. 
It's just the spline doesn't control that. This is controlled by the main object. And I can still drag this out whichever way I want. So if I was going to build a quick building with this idea, I didn't want to do that. And we've got to have the root here. Start grabbing spline points. It's uh, going to get all weird on you. I'll drag this here. Drag this down here. Make a smaller building. Regrab the root. I'm going to alt drag this over. I'm going to grab both these. Alt and drag. And let's just rotate these. 90. Oh, down. Grab the right handles. Turn this over here. Let's get some steer today. All right, so that's close. Then you can move them individually. That one's good. This one needs to go. Oh, just a hair. This one needs to go out, just a hair. Okay, so, I mean, real quick, this is a real quick building. You know, I can spend some more time on it, but uh, All right, so that's it for this video. Uh, like I said, just want to keep it kind of simple and expand on the last idea that I uh, did the video for um, and add the spline, like I mentioned. In the next video, uh, we're going to get it super complicated and make it so that you could draw spline out, alt drag another spline out, alt drag another spline out, and then actually uh, build a building with one spline instead of half trying to have four. Uh, this idea still applies for things where you will want to um, add any number of items, right? So I can still add my repeating items. I can still add something else to this. So let's add the uh, cube again, just for lack of having some idea. Um, you can still add the transform, right? Because we're still doing this, this math in our calculations. You can add this thing out, you can push it out, you can rotate it, right? So you can still use this for that idea, um, and then everything just gets copied based on the length of the spline. It's really the only difference. It may be cleaner for some people rather than the number of copies. Um, and when we get into the next idea, I think that it will uh, make a lot more sense and be a lot more powerful but it's a lot more complicated. So, all right, that's it for this video. And, um, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or concerns um, or any ideas or any new functionality you think you might want added to this kind of thing. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching.